Welcome back. No, I don't like that. <laughs> Welcome back to Talking Story. My name is John. What are my hands doing up here like a T-Rex? Today, we're going to be tearing into the Joe Ledger series by Jonathan Mauberry. Now, we're going to start with our review at Joe Ledger book number 11 because it's Joe Ledger International book one. And I'm not going back for all the first 10 books. Um, but I have like really recommitted myself. I, I, I off and on read this series and really enjoyed it. I kind of fell off reading for a while, but I found out that Jonathan Mawbury has written an epic fantasy that takes place 50,000 years after the fall of mankind and civilization is starting to rebuild with sword and sorcery and there's some Lovecraftian influences and some of the immortal characters that appear in the Joe Ledger series are still around and in that series. So I'm trying to get to the end of this so I can get to Kagan the Damned. Uh, but there's a short stumbling block uh, between. Uh, once I catch up with this, there's a four book series about how when Joe Ledger doesn't save the day and the world falls uh, to the zombie apocalypse. And then 15 years after that on Mr. Mawberry's timeline, there's a seven book series of uh, what happens in that apocalyptic reality of the of the zombie apocalypse. So, and, and that's a YA series called Rotten Ruin, a pretty popular series. And uh, I am not gonna let the shelf Nazis at bookstores scare me away from a YA book by putting it on a shelf over there because I'm not gonna let them tell me what stories to read or not read. Um, so, you know what? Let me start off by saying what initially drew me to this series. And to do that, I gotta put you on the Wayback Machine and take you way back. When I was a kid, uh, this was, I don't know, gosh, years ago, and my mom would take me shopping, grocery shopping, and I would love to go because at the grocery store, I could hang out at the magazine rack, and I could flip through Creepy and Eerie and Fangoria and Heavy Metal, and once I'd done that, I would cruise over to that creakety, spindly thing with all the paperbacks on it, and uh, they had a whole row on that thing that was called Men's Interest. And it had titles like Mac Bolin, The Executioner, and The Adventures of Remo Williams, and Casca, The Immortal Warrior. And I thought, when I get older, I'm gonna read me some of that. And it wasn't long after that I discovered a, a wardrobe that took me to Narnia. And after that, Frank Herbert that took me to another planet called Arrakis. And, uh, after that, Lovecraft. And so my reading dance card was really full. But eventually, I kind of got all the way back around to uh, to this series. And it kind of has that same kind of influence. Now, that's not to say that you got to be, you know, this tall and have a Y chromosome to enjoy this ride. That's not what I'm saying at all by hearkening it back to like those old men's interest books. What I'm saying is this takes the best of like a spec ops militaristic thriller, mashes it with some great jump out of your seat horror fiction and gives you a package that goes down just right. So if you enjoy uh, uh, the Jason Bourne movies, if you get excited for the next James Bond film that's coming out, uh, if you like to end your rough day with a nice session to Call of Duty, chances are you're gonna like this series. So let me tell you a little bit about this series since we are jumping in at book 11, uh, book one of the Rogue International part, but book 11 of Joe Ledger. So Joe Ledger, an ex-army ranger and uh, ex-Baltimore detective, uh, kind of forged in a horrible tragedy, and I don't wanna to give too much away here, but think like Bruce Wayne losing his parents, forged in a horrible tragedy, and he's uh, kind of suffering from a little PTSD, and he's approached by the mysterious Mr. Church, who has a possible mission for him. And he brings him into the DMS, the Department of Military Sciences. And from there, they tackle everything that kinda goes bump in the night in a terrorist situation to keep the, uh, the country safe. So that kind of gives you the basics on the series, the, the very basic basics. So from there, let's go into our five star system. We're gonna look at five different areas, rate it anywhere from a quarter to a full star, and that's how we're gonna get our overall score on Rogue Team International Joe Ledger, book one or book 11, however you wanna look at it. Let me start with world building. Now this is where I think Jonathan Mawbury 
uses his journalism degree from Tufts University to the ultimate. He talks with I don't know how many experts. He does the research to make you believe and suspend your disbelief that every crazy world-ending scheme by these supervillains is absolutely believable. You will not only believe what is going on in these books. When you walk outside, it might make you look at the real world a totally different way. So kudos to that. He also keeps up to date on the most advanced science, the bleeding edge science. He always pulls interesting things for his stories, uh, technology as far as weaponry and things like that go. So it is our world, but it has this crazy super spy veneer laid over it that makes it oh so, so interesting. So I'm going to have to say uh, full star. Book after book, the world is incredibly interesting and it just keeps growing and growing and growing with not only Joe Ledger's group, in this one, the Rogue International team, they had to leave the Department of Military Sciences after last book because, again, looking at our real world, pulling things from the headlines, uh, Democrats and Republicans are just too at odds to let anything go without a fight and they couldn't be effective. So now they're working under a UN charter and the stories are taking more of a global feel. Uh, so that kind of gives you an idea of how he pulls things from our real, real world and uh, uh, infuses them into this book. So full star on world building. Uh, let's move on to character. Of course you have Joe Ledger and uh, it is a first person narrative. So everything kind of is through his eyes, but there's so many great characters in this. As I said before, the mysterious Mr. Church that approached him. Now, Mr. Church has been fighting this war against evil or chaos for nobody really knows how long. He has a desk in his office that was carved in the 16th century, and I'm pretty sure he gave the instructions to the woodworker on how to build it. So he's been around doing this forever. You've got uh, the other uh, elite shooters in the Spec Ops team with Joe Top and Bunny. Uh, you've got the uh, IT expert, Bug. It, it, it's, I mean, think Q and M from James Bond, but with a little bit more of a sarcastic flair, a little bit more of that uh, American flavor. Uh, the character is really great, but I will say the number one thing that Mr. Mawberry excels at, book after book after book, is creating a villain. I'm talking Blofeld level, Moriarty level, super villains that are creepy, that you will believe, want nothing more than to watch it all burn, and book after book, he pulls this off. So. I'm going to say character again on my rating scale, I got to go a full star. Okay, let's go into plot. So plot in a Jonathan Marbury book, especially a Joe Ledger book, they are as brutal as the fight scenes he writes. And he knows how to write a fight scene. He's a martial arts expert. He is a, uh, a past bouncer. He is a past bodyguard. So this is a man that knows how to throw hands. So his fight scenes are never the same and they're always crazy, brutal, and interesting, which is pretty much every plot in every one of these books as well. This particular one starts off with a crazy jailbreak and uh, goes from there. It's a villain that we think we have already handled and dealt with, but he's come back around. A villain that once was a very important member of the Department of Military Sciences, but turned against them. And now he's come back and they're testing out their uh, new rage bioweapon on some secluded islands ever, uh, in the Pacific and uh, seeing if they can turn regular people into just ravaging, killing machines. I mean, just full id unleashed. Think like uh, the zombies in 28 days, that type of level destruction. So I will say this about it now. As I said, there's a little bit of a rinse and repeat in the villain. It is a villain we've seen before. Um, and this is a plot device that Jonathan Mawberry has used before. Uh, a bioweapon that unleashes our innermost darkest killing machine self. Uh, he's gone to this well a couple times. So, I mean, I will say this. Sometimes when I'm uh, driving somewhere, I gotta pull off and I gotta get gas, right? Chances are, if that happens, I'm gonna walk in that gas station and I'm gonna get me a Snicker bar. I've had a lot of Snicker bars in my life. 
but I'm going to have a lot more in my life. Every time I get gas, I'm going to get a Snicker bar. So even though this is a little bit of a rinse or repeat, it still satisfies. It's still a heck of a wild and fun, fun ride. So for plot, I will say I've enjoyed Joe Ledger plots a little bit more in the past. This one, because of the rinse and, rinse and repeat aspect, I'm going to go half star. Half star on plot. Uh, pace. Let's move on to pace. I have to say a pace in a Joe Ledger novel is absolutely what you would expect. It is nonstop, breakneck action from page one to the last page. You will clinch and you will hold your breath a lot of the time because this does not let up. It's a full-blown assault. A lot of the times for pace, uh, almost all, uh, no, I think every one, every single book that I can remember, he uses uh, a non-linear structure to the to the pace where he's going back in time so you can be introduced to the villain and what went wrong in their lives and why they would want to watch it all burn. And then you go forward into them trying to foil this plot or figure out this plot of what's going on. So it goes back and forth like this. So it never stays in one place very long. And it just continues continues to click and click and click and click and click up that hill until about the last third or sometimes even two thirds of that book. It is just an all out drop. You're just holding your breath to see who's going to win the day. Almost every time or so far, 11 books, every time Joe Ledger and the team have won the day, but still they get into such situations. You're like, eh, this is it. They, they, they can't they can't get out of this. They're not they're not coming back from this. So pace. I'm gonna I gotta give it to the guy, man. He covers the journey of the villain so you understand the villain. It's not just a caricature. And at the same time, the pace just amps up. Three quarter star on pace. So that leaves us with our category of pros. I'm not gonna say Jonathan Mobbery is the greatest prose artist out there. Um, it is pretty utilitarian. A lot of the times, um, it is uh, reading like uh, a prepper's catalog sometimes. It's got a lot of anachronisms uh, as far as weapons go, as far as weapon systems go, military anachronisms, things like that. Uh, and it, it can read like a prepper's catalog or like a glossy issue of guns and ammo at times. But every once in a while, he will put a phrase in there that makes you just kind of, whoa, wow. Hadn't thought of it like that. That was a little bit pretty. So I do think words matter to him. And that is why I want to get through this and through some of his zombie stuff to get to that epic fantasy book to where maybe he can really write in kind of a different style. I really can't wait to see that from Mr. Mawberry after reading so many Joe Ledger books. Um, and sometimes being in the first person, um, you can sometimes want a different perspective than... Joe Ledger's hard-bitten, sarcastic, cynical view. Um, now, when he does flash back to the villains, of course, that is not Joe Ledger's view. That's that's how the book breaks up. But uh, so, I mean, as with all first-person narratives, I mean, and I think, you know, there's a lot of series that kind of fall into this sometimes. A lot of times, uh, early books in the Dresden Files. People will say, oh, yeah, I don't know, man, that's a little male gazy. I mean, the... Uh, Jim Butcher is trying to uh, to do that old style noir detective feel. Here, Jonathan Mawberry is trying to do that uh, modern techno thriller spec ops militaristic feel. Uh, so it, it you know you can start to want to have maybe a little bit of a different perspective. So I'm gonna go for pros. I'm gonna go half star. I enjoy them every time. I keep coming back and they're tons of fun. So I'm going to say half star. So if we add all that together, overall, we end up on this particular one, Rogue Team International Book 1, Joe Ledger, Book 11, with an overall score of 3.75. Now remember, three is solid. Four is like one of my all-time favorites. Five is a book that's going to live long past we've all failed to dusty death. So... 3.75, this is almost like way up there on one of my favorite shelves. I will tell you, there have been some four-star reads in the Joe Ledger series. Uh, this one, because of the rinse and repeat, 
takes it down for a little bit for me. Uh, so I'm gonna end up giving it 3.75. Overall, I will say check it out. Like I say, if you love a James Bond flick, if you love uh, uh, Jason Bourne movies, this is absolutely a series for you. And I don't think it gets near the attention it should, even though Jonathan Mawberry is a multi-stoker winning writer. So that's it for me until next time. But if you wanna hang out for a little bit, I'm gonna go full on spoilery talk in just a few minutes. I'll give you a second to hop off if you haven't read Joe Ledger Rage or any Joe Ledger books yet. Okay, spoiler talk time. That ending. Oh my God. I can't even say what happens exactly because I just can't bring myself to say the spoiler. But look, it's a long-term rule in writing. You've got to kill your darlings. You've got to create your children on paper and then put them through hell. The end of this book, I'm just gonna say deaths plural. Oh my God, what happens? My jaw dropped. I cannot wait for the next book, which is called Relentless, because I am positive Joe Ledger is gonna let that killer that he keeps locked up in his head have free reign and just run completely loose in a vengeance-fueled extravaganza. If you've read it, let me know. I would love to talk that ending with someone that I know I'm not spoiling it for anyone. That's it for me. Maybe you don't have to pick up and read the Joe Ledger series, but pick up and read something. Thanks for joining me on Talking Story.